Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot the disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. We're here on the OpenSUSE.org website, I'll put a link in the description below. And what we'll do first is go ahead and download an image. We have two different versions here, the Leap version, which is the latest regular stable release version. And then on the left hand side, you have the Tumbleweed version, which is the rolling release. This is the latest and greatest available packages here in the Tumbleweed so that you know that you're on the cutting edge of technology here. We'll go ahead and install Tumbleweed today. So go ahead and hit the install Tumbleweed option here. They make it very easy here to select a version. So after we've clicked that, give it a moment. And then we have a few options here that we can select from. If we scroll down, as you can see, we have different architectures here, x86-64, the 64-bit version, then the i586, ARC-64, PPC-64LE, but what we want is the x86-64 because we have a 64-bit computer that we plan on installing this on. So there are a few options here. You can download the DVD image or the network image. The network image will require a network connection in order to download packages from the online repositories while you're installing. But if you get the DVD image, this will already have the most of the software required to install your desktop or server. I'll go ahead and download the DVD image. So you can pick a mirror or select the meta link. And if you need to check the checksum, you can as well. I'll pick a mirror here. Here it gives you the information about the mirror and the image you're about to download. As you can see, it's the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed DVD X8664. It's a snapshot from uh, November 12th, 2019 called the media ISO. So we can actually click this button here, which will download the file from the preferred mirror. So the closest one to us. And you also have the options below to select from different mirrors if you to choose to do so. So after I've hit the download file, I'll allow it to download and we're off to the download. Give this a few moments while it downloads and then we'll move on to flashing the disc and then we'll move on to flashing the image onto a disc. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD. The Belena Etcher app is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNet Bootin. First, we'll select the image that we just got done downloading. Go ahead and select it here. And as you can see in my downloads folder, I have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, the DVD for the 64-bit architecture. It's a snapshot that was created in November 12th of 2019. Let's go ahead and select it. And next, we're going to select a target. Well, for this, I'll have to put my USB into the computer, so give me a moment. and it should automatically populate here. I'll hit ignore on that. And as you can see, it did populate. If you have more than one USB, CD, or DVD in your computer, you can hit the change button and select the correct drive that you want to use. Make sure you select a drive that has nothing on it because the drive will be overwritten and you will lose all data that you have on it. And finally, go ahead and hit the flash button to begin flashing the disk. This will take a few minutes. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install OpenSUSE on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. Usually it's one of the F keys such as F2 or F10. Then you'll find a tab usually called boot order and exchange it in order for your bootable disk to boot first. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly.
If you went ahead and made it this far, please go ahead and hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion of OpenSUSE. So what we'll do here is select the installation option here. Go ahead and hit that. It's loading the kernel here. Give it a few moments while it gets the installer up. The first thing that's done here is the network is initialized. So give it a moment here to initialize the network and find a internet connection. As you can see, it downloaded a few things and it's asking us for a language keyboard and make sure we agree to the license agreement. So the language that we're going to be selecting for this install is English US. You can select whatever you'd like. Uh, the keyboard is also the English US. You can test the keyboard here by typing something in. So you can see that QWERTY showed up correctly. I know that my keyboard is set up correctly. Make sure you go ahead and read through the license agreement and if you agree to it, go ahead and hit the next button. Also, if you have a language that you would like the that you would like the license translated to, you can hit the license translations here. And of course, if you don't agree, you can always abort. Go ahead and hit the next button when you're ready. So since it did detect a network connection, it's asking you if it want if you want to use the online repositories to pull down other packages packages that are available that you might select to install. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes since I do have that internet connection available. And here you get a list of the online repositories. So the first three defaulted ones I'll go ahead and use. I don't necessarily need the sources or debug features available so I'll go ahead and keep those deselected. It does tell you some information about the repositories here at the bottom if need be. Go ahead, once those are selected, hit next. And right now it's just adding the repositories in, so give it a few moments. And here you get to select what type of desktop version you want, or if you just want the generic desktop. You also have the option for server installs if you'd like to do that here. So the server installs come with a text mode interface. So this is really just a terminal that you can use. So if you're not looking for this, I suggest using a desktop version. And you have a few different desktop environments available to you. You have the KDE Plasma, which is the default desktop environment, GNOME and XFCE available. The descriptions are all pretty much the same, so it really doesn't describe them to you, but you can check out the various different environment looks before you go ahead and install one if you'd like. I'm going to go with the KDE Plasma one, which is the default desktop environment. And once you have your desktop selected, go ahead and hit the next button. And here OpenSUSE lays out a partitioning proposal for you. So it tells you what it's gonna do here and how much space it's going to use. So you have 33 gigabytes devoted to SDA2, 8 megabytes to SDA1, and 2 gigabytes for swap here on SDA3. And the main partitioning table here is created on SDA, so the disk is called SDA and it has these partitions underneath it. You can also use the guided setup or the expert partitioner if you have a different scheme you'd like to use. I like the default, so I will go ahead and hit the next button here. Also, make sure to have no data on the current storage disk that you are installing OpenSUSE on because OpenSUSE will overwrite everything that's currently on the storage media where you plan on installing it. So it's best to start with a fresh storage disk or one that you don't need any information on. So go ahead and here and select your time zone. Um, I'm going to be in New York today, that's fine by me. So the regions US, Eastern, New York, that's all fine here. And hit next once these settings are done. Go ahead and create a user here. So I'm going to create my user as Savvy Nick. So the full name for the user is Savvy Nick. My username will be Savvy Nick. Put a password in. And it says here that you can use the same password for the system administrator. Check this box if you'd like that. I'm fine with that. 
and I do like the automatic login, so that checkbox is fine by me. Just make sure if you're using the automatic login, you understand that if someone reboots the computer, they can access the computer without having to log in. Also, you can select the skip user creation and just create a root user instead of another user here. Once you've uh, set this up, go ahead and hit the next button. Now here I'm being warned that my password is too simple, which in my case it is very simple, but I really do wanna use this password for now since it's just an install video here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes, make sure to make your passwords strong. And finally, before the system is installed, you will OpenSUSE will explain what it will be doing for you. So here are all the installation settings for the system. You can run through these if you'd like and also change them if you would like as well. The default is fine for me, so I will allow the standard Grub Bootloader, the standard software here, as well as a graphical mode and the standard security scheme, as well as the network configure configuration. If you're happy with these, go ahead and hit the install button. And lastly here, it's going to make sure and ask you to confirm the installation. Once you've clicked this, you will modify your hard disk and erase anything that's currently on it. So if you're comfortable doing that, go ahead and hit the install button. And now it's performing the installation. You can see here, it gives you some information on what is currently happening. Happening. You can see it's installing different types of packages here, I'm running through them here. So there's quite a bit of packages to go through and you can see the media and repositories that it's picked up from. So you can see media one is gonna be the disk that we have and then we have the three repositories that we were talking about and how much space has been used from it. So a little bit about OpenSUSE. It's an independent distribution whose main focus is to make Linux easy for everyone to use. The goal here is to be accepted by everyone, including admins, developers, everyday users, and beginners. They have a few different offer they have a few different offerings as you saw in the install portion, the desktop, the server, and they even have a Raspberry Pi edition with multiple different architectures of support as well. OpenSUSE has been around since the 90s and is one of the top Linux distributions out there. They have support from the SUSE community who help develop and maintain OpenSUSE from their enterprise version called SUSE. It's a very popular distribution and they stay true to their ideology to create an all-encompassing distribution. We'll give this a few moments here while it finishes up the installation. And once the installer is finished, you'll get a countdown for the system to reboot here. And once things have booted in, you'll be welcomed by the Ahoy, this is OpenSUSE here, welcome screen, which gives you the basics and documentation to read as well as get software or contribute to OpenSUSE. So at this point, you have successfully installed OpenSUSE Linux onto a computer of your choice Congratulations, you've successfully done it. So we'll go ahead and close out of this welcome screen and look at our new desktop here. In the upper right hand corner, you have a few options, some shortcuts really here. You can add widgets, show the desktop, customize the layout as well as the desktop. And then in the middle, you can select multiple files if necessary. You have the option of putting files in the desktop environment. We'll just go through a couple more things real quick. In the left hand side, you have basically a start menu here with a little lizard head, and it has your username as well as different types of pre installed packages, a web browser, a word processor, and some other things that you can use here. Of course, the terminal, very important. You have various applications, the computer history, as well as leaving out of here so you can see. Uh, you can scroll through these 
And on the right hand side, you have access to the current workspace, adjusting the panel, the current time and date, as well as network settings, volume settings, some hidden stuff here for status and notifications. And on the left hand side, a device notifier. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.